Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're going to be looking at how to set up idle mixture settings on a Holly carburetor. We're going to be setting it up on a Holly 750 which has a four corner idle adjustment. I've recently made some changes to the carburetor and I want to make sure that it's set up and running right. I'm noticing on my air to fuel gauge that it's running a little bit rich at idle. We're probably seeing around 12 to 12 and a half to one where I'd like to be a little bit more lean. So we're going to walk through the step-by-step -step process of how to adjust the idle mixture screws on this Holly carb with four corner idle screws. Now to do this project, it's really simple if you're doing it on any carb, whether you're looking at an Edelbrook, whether you're looking at a Holly carburetor, all you really need to do and all you need to have is a vacuum gauge and a small flat blade screwdriver. You really don't need the air to fuel gauge to be able to do it. It's nice to have to look to see how it's changing, but you don't really need it. Now, while we're setting up the Holly, we'll talk a little bit about the four corner idle adjustment. So both the primaries and the secondaries on this Holly carburetor have, I have an idle mixture adjustment. You'll be able to see it on both sides on the primary and then both sides on the secondary. As we work through it, what you're gonna notice is we're gonna start with the primary side, we're gonna get that right, and then we're gonna work our way to the secondary side. Before you start this off, we really wanna make sure that the carburetor is tuned enough that it's running right. Now comes the fun part. We gotta warm the car up. So I'm gonna take the car for a cruise and go warm it up. All right, now with the car warmed up, we're gonna have to go ahead and we're gonna set the idle mixture screws. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we need to attach the vacuum gauge to the engine. To do this, we wanna put it on manifold vacuum. Manifold vacuum will be either directly from the manifold on the intake, or it'll be directly under the carburetor. Holly carburetors have a manifold vacuum port right on the front of it, right under the front of the carburetor at the bottom. Now one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the idle mixture screws in all the way and I'm going to turn them back out one and a half turns open. I want to make sure both the primary sides are set to the same before I start. There are two ways that we can do this adjustment. We can set the primaries first going back and forth between them, and then set the secondaries, or you can do all four screws at the same time. I would recommend by starting to do all four idle mixture screws at the same time then to start, and then if you want to do some more advanced tuning, set the primary first and then work your way to the secondary. So we're going to begin by adjusting the driver's side primary idle mixture screw in about an eighth of a turn, so that's going to be clockwise, while we're monitoring the vacuum gauge. If the engine vacuum or engine speed increases, then we're going to adjust the passenger side idle mixture screw the same amount and monitor the vacuum reading. Then we're going to drop the curb idle screw down to keep us at the same place we were before. When doing it this way, all the screws should end up at the same position. So if you turn in one screw one eighth of a turn, then the other screw also needs to be turned in an eighth of a turn. If after adjusting the first idle mixture screw, the vacuum drops on the engine, then we need to return the last setting and then turn the mixture screw outward about an eighth of a turn. So you return back to the highest vacuum setting. With a four screw adjustment, you should do all four evenly. You know, we're not gonna go ahead and we're not gonna do the, them separately, but when you do them separately, you wanna start at the primary, work your way back to the secondary, and they could end up at different settings, mainly because the throttle blades are gonna be in different positions between the primary and secondary. Now I'm going to keep going across all four of these screws until I find the highest vacuum. I'm going to watch a gauge and I'm going to keep making changes until the vacuum starts dropping down again. When the vacuum drops, I'm then going to turn the screw back to the previous position and ensure all the screws are set the same. 
if one eighth of a turn is too much and I can't get them even, I'll typically try a smaller adjustment, maybe go down to one sixteenth of an inch until I'm even across all four screws. After this is done and I have the highest vacuum, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check my air to fuel gauge and make sure I'm reading in the right area that I want to be for idle, which is around 13 and a half to 14 and a half to one. I'm happy with the way everything ended up. The car's running a lot better at idle and it's running better off of idle. So next step for tuning the carburetor is going to be to change out the jets. I've been noticing that the car is running a little bit rich while I'm driving down the road at 35 plus miles per hour. So I'm going to make some changes to the jets and we're going to see how it goes. Thanks for tuning in this week on Smacky's Garage. Don't forget to subscribe. Next week we're going to be working on changing out the jets on this carburetor. I'll see you then.